Hello again, so 2013 makeup favourites time, yay, finally. I'm going to be doing this video in two parts. First part, which is this one, is all the uh, face products, so everything for the face including blush. And then the second part is going to be the remainder, the colour cosmetics, so basically eyes and lips. I probably should point out for those of you that don't normally watch my videos that I'm not really a high-end sort of girl so you're not going to be seeing a lot of uh, Urban Decay, Lorac, MAC products featured here. Not, not that I have anything against those kind of makeup products, just for me personally. I prefer to spend my money on higher-end skincare products and I just don't have a budget that stretches to both so most of the makeup that I'll be featuring here today is pretty much uh, low-end budget drugstore makeup whatever you, you'd like to call it so, so let's get started first of all I'm going to kind of work through the products in order starting with a primer there is a primer that I use quite regularly not specifically as a primer it's the, it's the L'Oreal Lumi Magic Pure Light Primer now what I do with this I don't actually apply this all over my face prior to makeup like you would traditionally do with a primer I just um, mix a, a squirt or so of this in with any foundation that I'm wearing. It's like a white pearlescent sort of liquid and I just find mixed in with my foundation or even BB cream. It just makes it that much more lighter, easier to apply and has that luminous lit from within to be cliched sort of look and um, been really impressed with how this works with just about any sort of uh, foundation or um, BB cream so that's been a real favorite this year I'm actually wearing this one today with the next product I'm going to mention and that is my medium to full coverage favorite foundation of 2013 which is the Revlon color stay whipped makeup mine's in number 220 nude you've probably all seen this product before it's a cream this particular one, I think, though, applies best with a, a makeup brush. The foundation is quite buildable. It gives quite a good amount of coverage while still looking fairly natural. So that's one of the pluses. It doesn't seem to cling to the dry areas in my face or oxidise during the day. Uh, so lasting power is very good. Let's say for a special event or, or um, a day where I might be wanting to, my makeup to last me through the day and into the evening that would be the the one I have reached for in 2013. Moving on to the light to medium coverage foundation that I've really enjoyed in 2013 it has to be the Bourjois Healthy Mix Serum foundation the one with the red lid just, just such a lovely consistency this foundation it's supposed to be like a gel um, type formula it does have a, a nice sort of gel creamy sort of consistency to it I feel like it, it lasts really well during the day, makes your skin just look really radiant and, and fairly natural while providing a, um, a good level of coverage without being too heavy. This is my go-to foundation in 2013 for work, so I've been wearing this pretty much every day. Really, really loving it. And as far as drugstore type foundations go, I think this is one that comes about as close to a high-end formulation as you can get. This foundation can be a little hard to get hold of. There's three Priceline stores uh, accessible to me. There's only one that has the uh, Bourjois range and, and this foundation always sells out really quickly so that's probably a testament to, to how many people um, also rate this one as a favourite. Next coverage down from that one is my BB creams. I haven't tried any of the traditional Asian type BB creams. I've only really tried the Western versions, tried a few different um, drugstore type brands but the one, or I should say ones, there's a tie for this that I've enjoyed most in 2013 is, is these two here. It's the Sleek Be Beautiful Blemish Balm in the colour light and the other one being the Face of Australia BB Cream, this one is in light to medium. Both quite similar products, quite a thick darkish cream, very similar, lovely lightweight, satiny, glowy uh, sort of finish on the skin, decent amount of coverage in both, probably a little more coverage in the sleek product than the Face of Australia. It's the finishing coverage of, of these products that's really stood out for me in 2013. I've tried BB creams that um, 
didn't really have much coverage at all or the colour just ended up looking really wrong on my skin. Really, really love both of these and, and reach for them all the time when I, I'm not working. And once again, generally mix in just a little bit of the L'Oreal Lumi Magic Primer with these ones as well and apply them both with my fingertips. Moving on to concealers next, I tend to like to use a brightening or illuminating concealer um, in a liquid form for my under eye area and then I'll use a stick concealer for covering blemishes and scars and, and things that require a bit more coverage and a, a bit more staying power. Now as far as the illuminating concealers go, this is probably no surprise to anybody but it, it's a tie between my two favourites of 2013. One being the Maybelline Dream Lumi Touch Concealer and the other one being the Rimmel 2-in-1 uh, Concealer and Highlighter. The Maybelline one is a little more yellow, gives a, a bit more coverage. The Rimmel one is, is a bit lighter and more uh, fluid. So I, I tend to use the Maybelline one when I'm doing a, a um, heavier foundation look. I'm wearing that one today. And the Rimmel one for a more casual look. But definitely those two have been my favourite favourites in 2013. Now moving on to the stick concealer, just a, a very quick story for you. There is a stick concealer made by Nutramedics which I have been using seriously since I was about 15 or 16 years old. It's one of those products that I could probably say I've used for a majority of my life just because it covers everything. Literally you could have an open wound on your face and this product would cover it. And it's, it's this one, the Nutramedics Total Cover Concealer. Having said all that, I, I can't recommend that one as my favourite for 2013 because it's actually been discontinued. I can no longer get that concealer and yes, tears have been shed, but I've been trying desperately to find a replacement for something that would even come close to the performance of that one. And I did find a couple in 2013 that quite impressed me in that regard. So. They've taken out the crown of being my favourites. The first one is a, a product by Savvy, Savvy by DB. And what it is is actually their full coverage stick foundation. Now this obviously is a foundation, but I have been using it as a stick concealer. I usually just uh, apply these with a, a little fine brush. This is the Real Techniques Detailer Brush. And it does actually say on the, the back of this product that it can be used as a concealer and yeah it um, it performs pretty well for covering the blemishes and and marks on your face. I've tried the actual stick concealer from Savvy as well and wasn't overly impressed so I'd, I'd, um, I'd recommend this one over that. And the second um, concealer that I wanted to mention that's also been a favourite which became a favourite right towards the end of 2013 but I think worth a mention and it's, a, it's another Rimmel concealer I think it's a new product to Australia, it's called the Stay Matte Concealer. Hopefully it shows up on camera but there's a, the concealer and like a green sort of hue in the, the core of the product. And it's well known that green is a, is a shade that um, is great for cancelling out redness on your face. So quite ingenious of Rimmel to combine that colour and the um, you know, skin colour concealer in the one tube. Rimmel as a brand has really stepped it up I think in 2013. They've had some really innovative quality uh, products, many of which I've really enjoyed. So, on to powders now and I have a few different categories to talk about here. First of all, a pressed powder. powder. And the standout winner for me in 2013 is the Revlon Photo Ready Pressed Powder. Now there's no particular coverage in this powder, it is very much just a, a finishing sort of powder. It's lovely and smooth, really finely milled, great colour, lasts really well and lovely finish on the skin. So really impressed with that particular powder in 2013. It's also the one that I pop in my uh, bag for touch-ups during the day. Now I'm actually a relatively recent convert to pressed powders. Probably just over the last few years I've, I've been using them. Prior to that I, I pretty much was a loose powder girl um, for many, many years. The reason being that I, I'd read somewhere years ago that the pressed powders are actually pressed with oil so a loose powder is a better option for an oilier skin. 
and because I was quite oily in, in my younger years, I, I just tended to always steer towards a loose powder. And I do occasionally still use one. One that I really liked in 2013 in particular is the another Savvy product. So the Savvy by DB Loose Powder. This one's just in the colour Translucent, although there is just a, a teeny bit of colour in there, which is actually a plus for the product because you find with a, a powder that is actually translucent, uh, quite often it can leave a bit of a grey cast on your face, so it's actually nice to have a, a bit of colour in your loose powder. This one's lovely and fine, um, really nice finish on the skin, inexpensive and quite a lot of product in the container as well, so a really good buy that one. Now moving on to the powders that have a more coverage, um, I guess the mineral powder or a powder foundation is the, the type of category. There's two that I, I really love um, and that I've used uh, quite frequently, regularly in 2013. The first one is a MAC product, it's the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish. It's just such a lovely, natural, satiny, luminous finish. I always get compliments on how um, good my skin looks when I'm, I'm wearing this powder and it definitely deserves all the accolades it gets. It's a really outstanding product so I really like that one. But another product that's really wowed me in 2013 in a similar vein is the Australis Fresh and Flawless Powder. I was a bit late getting on the bandwagon with this one. There's been quite a bit of talk on YouTube from Aussie Girls um, for quite some time about how, how good this powder is. So I finally got one in 2013 in the colour Natural. Very much hit pan on mine. Worn this pretty much every day over my Bourjois foundation to work and really impressed with just the extra coverage that it provides, the mattifying effect, but also uh, not too matte, so not a flat looking finish, kind of a bit of a satiny finish I guess. Good lasting power, um, once again inexpensive product and I have already repurchased a backup, so loving the Australis Fresh and Flawless powder. Just one more powdery product and I this um, category is a mineral powder foundation and also something that I discovered towards the end of 2013 but a product that has already really wowed me I guess and it's the, and it's this Revlon Nearly Naked Powder Foundation. The colour I have is number 20 light which is the uh, second lightest shade in the range. When I was looking at this powder in Priceline and trying out the different shades, the lightest shade actually seemed to be too light for me and this shade, number 20, which is the next shade along, seemed to be a bit dark so I wasn't really too sure which one to pick. I got the darker shade because it is summer in Australia at the moment and really glad I did because it actually seems to give my face a little bit of colour as well but not looking unnatural so, so it just makes me look that little bit more tanned I guess if that's the right word and it is a mineral powder foundation so I do this wear this one on its own just buffed into my face with like a kabuki type brush um, generally over concealer and it gives a lovely natural finish with a uh, fairly decent amount of coverage just really lovely natural flawless look and such an easy product just to buff into your face on a weekend if you don't want to go to too much trouble with your makeup. So. On to bronzers, a couple of favourites in 2013. First of all probably the front runner, front runner would be my um, Revlon Photo Ready bronzer. It only comes in the one colour, this is called Bronzed and Chic. Similar packaging to the uh, Revlon Photo Ready pressed powder. This bronzer, as you can see, has four different shades in the pan. So it's quite versatile. You can use the darker half of the product if you've got darker skin. The top half of the product if you've got lighter skin. You can also just swirl all the products together to get like a medium sort of bronze shade. There's options there to do some contouring or even use some of those darker shades as eyeshadows as well. And um, once again, lovely smooth, finely milled consistency really natural looking on the face, blends in really lovely to the skin and just been an outstanding bronzer for me, concentrating in the top half of the pan in 2013. Another discovery though in the bronzer line is another Savvy product, Savvy by DB. I didn't realise I'd been using so many of their products in 2013. What this is, is actually just their pressed powder. Right. I wanted to use it as a bronzer, so, so I specifically got the darkest colour that I could find, which is called Tan 
and um, found it, it's worked really well for that purpose. So for those lighter skinned girls out there, the Savvy Pressed Powder in Tan might just be a good bronzer shade for you. Lovely matte colour, not too orange, quite natural, not too muddy and um, really enjoyed that one in 2013 as well. Quickly moving on to blush, now I am a cream blush girl, I love my cream blushes and there's two that have really stood out for me in 2013. First of all it's the Max Factor Mir Miracle Touch Blush in Soft Pink. I noticed in 2013 a lot of girls in the UK were, were talking about this blush and, and how good it was and, and by the time it was sort of being talked about on YouTube it was actually no longer available in, in Australia and I haven't been able to find anywhere to repurchase it which is really sad. That's what it looks like. There's very little product in the container but the creamy consistency, the colour payoff, the lasting power, the natural flush that it gives your cheeks is just really outstanding. So, so I will continue to try and find out where I can get another one of these blushes from. The other product is the Photo Ready Cream Blush. This one is in Coral Reef. Really lovely bright coral colour. And as opposed to the Max Factor blush, there is a, a really decent amount of product in this particular one from Revlon. Once again, really lovely consistency. This one's quite bright, so a little bit goes a long way. Lovely feel and look on the skin, good lasting power. Really impressed with that particular cream blush, and I will be looking to get another shade in 2014. Just a couple of things left onto powder blushes. Really, really enjoyed my cargo blushes in 2013. First of all it's the um, just the cargo standard blush in the Big Easy which had quite a bit of a cult following at, at one stage. Lovely light peachy not too sparkly everyday uh, sort of blush. Lovely smooth consistency. Lasts really well. Good colour payoff considering how pale it actually looks in the tin and just a really wearable blush um, regardless of what sort of whether you're wearing cool or warm colours or um, you know getting made up for a night out or just a, a casual look really versatile blush the big easy and the other one I have is this blush highlighter in peach it's a high definition blush so probably a good one to wear if you're going to a, a wedding or somewhere where um, you're going to be photographed really lovely subtle sort of shimmer particles in there as well once again, the same as the, the other cargo blush, good colour payoff, lovely smooth consistency. I'm wearing this one today and really impressed with the, the quality of those blushes. To mention a more budget friendly blush, it's also easier to get hold of in Australia. One that's really impressed is this Face of Australia blush. The colour is called Opeachy. Some people say it's, it's similar to NARS Orgasm. So it is quite a, a pinky peachy blush and a bit of a, a gold shimmer in there as well. The thing about this blush is that it's quite an unusual consistency in the pan. It seems quite rough, almost gravelly sort of consistency. But once you swirl your brush in there and apply it to your cheeks, it really um, feels quite lovely on the skin and looks quite natural. Good colour payoff and just a really lovely peach blush at a, at a good price. Last product in the face category and it's a highlighter. This is the Physicians Formula Happy Booster Powder in Translucent, which I use both as a fairly glowy finishing powder just with a, a light hand and also as a powder highlighter, particularly going into that big sort of pale heart just here, which I've um, I've done today and, and got, got this as a highlighter on my cheeks and, and down my nose. The product's a bit battered around. My, my son dropped this on the bathroom floor. Um, there's a, a deeper pink heart in there that can be a bit of a, a blush highlight as well. just think it's a really lovely subtle uh, shimmer product and um, really the only highlighter I, I've used in 2013 but really impressed with that one. So that's it, that's all my 2013 favourite makeup products for the face. Thank you so much for watching and keep tuned for the second part of this video which hopefully won't be too far away. Thanks a lot, bye bye.